Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Rex, and this is kind of a sequel to my Zelda timeline. The reason for me to do this is that I've been receiving a lot of feedback on my timeline, and a lot of those are arguments against me putting the Minish Cup first. Now, I didn't have as much time as I wish I had to explain every single game and why I chose to put it in their specific spots, but I'm gonna dedicate this video alone to just Minish Cap versus Skyward Sword for that first spot. If you haven't seen my complete timeline then please check out this link, but let's get to business right away. Now this is the timeline as I made it before, the Minish Cap going first, then Sword, Sword, and then Ocarina of Time. Now I don't follow official releases from the developers when they say that one game came after the other or before the other. The main reason for this is that there was a lot of miscommunication and mistranslation that happened in the 80s and the 90s, as well as just the general lack of care from the developers into this issue. So as my primary source of canon I actually use the story of the games. But because of a lot of the arguments against the Minish Cap coming first were directed towards the official releases from the developers, I decided to do what I didn't want to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and quote some releases. Now, on an interview with the developer of Skyward Sword, he was asked where the Skyward Sword actually fits into the timeline. He was literally asked if it came between the Minish Cap and Ocarina of Time. Now, he couldn't fully answer the question, all he said is that it came before Ocarina of Time for sure. But he never specifically said that it came before the Minish Cap, nor did he deny the Minish Cap being in that position in the first place. There has also been other official releases claiming that the game does show where Link actually gets his hat for the remainder of the series. Now this is important and very different from every other Zelda game where Link gets a hat because the past hero of legend doesn't actually have a hat in the story, so one can deduce that the heroes of the past never actually used a hat like Link started using after this game. Also, the developers have said countless times that they want to leave the timeline open so that they can put in sequels or prequels to whatever games they want whenever they want, and to leave space for whatever change that they might have to do in the future. Now leaving the official statements behind, let's talk about what I really wanted to talk about which is the storyline of the game and how it influences the timeline. Now first let's talk about the Hero of Men, which is the legendary hero in the past of the Minish Cap. The fact that it's named the Hero of Men though makes it really interesting. It's not named the Hero of Hyrule or the Hero of Time or whatever other nickname you can put him, but Men. Now before the entire events of Skyward Sword, they say that the humans were not called Hyruleans, they were actually called Men or Human. So one is led to believe that this hero was actually the hero of that time. A hero for the people when the races were not together in the continent that is Hyrule. But what makes it so much more interesting about this guy, in contrast with the other heroes in the prologues of the other Zelda games, is that this guy literally received his sword and the Triforce from the Minish. Now in the game it is described as the Force or the Light Force instead of the Triforce. And again because of the whole ambiguity into the whole concept of the Triforce in this game one is led to believe that this happened before the events of Skyward Sword, where the powers of the Triforce weren't really completely known to the people. This can be backed up by the fact that Batty, which is the enemy in the Minish Cap, had no idea of the true powers of the Triforce, as he really was only looking for the power of the Light Force that Zelda had in the game. But going a little bit deeper into this whole Light Force situation in this game, in the Minish Cap is where you actually found out that the power of light that Zelda has in every single Zelda game comes from here. In fact, the light power comes from the Minish, so this game definitely has to come before any other Zelda game, because otherwise Zelda wouldn't have that light power. Now you can also argue that the light power comes from the Triforce of Wisdom that is passed down through Zelda throughout the series, but then that would mean that that Triforce was the light power that was given to the Hero of Men by the Minish anyways. So either way you think about it, that means that this game must still come first in the series. Another big reason why this game must come first is just the lack of Ganondorf and Ganon in the series. 
This is literally the only game in the entire series where Ganondorf doesn't have anything to do with the fact of what's going on in the game. Now, I know that that is not literally true, but pay close attention. What I mean with Ganondorf having nothing to do with the game is that Ganondorf's actions in the past or in the present of the game has no kind of stimulus on the story of this game. Because games like Majora's Mask or Spirit Tracks or Phantom Hourglass, the reason for those games to happen was because of some action that happened because of Ganondorf. And you can try to argue semantics about that, but the matter of fact is, in the Minish Cap there is absolutely nothing that refers or that Ganondorf could have stimulated into this entire story happening. In fact, Ganondorf appears to not even exist in this game, so it must come before Skyward Sword in that regard as well. But now, the biggest of all reasons why I'm actually putting this first is because literally you could not put this game anywhere else in the timeline unless it is first. The most popular argument between theories is uh, putting Minish Cap a second after Skyward Sword. Now, the reason why that's not possible first is because of the geography. It would make sense for the geography to be different before a cataclysmic event like the one that happened in Skyward Sword and then be changed after it's repopulated again after the events of Skyward Sword and have this name changed. But why would the names change from the Minish Gap to Ocarina of Time of the places in the land if there's no cataclysmic event where nothing spectacular happened in between those two games? You really can't say that the people of Hyrule simply forgot about the Minish and decided to rename the Minish Forest the Lost Woods or to simply rename the Kernel Mountain into Death Mountain just because they wanted to. The second reason and the most important reason is that if you decide to take away the fact of the Minish Cap that it introduced the whole hat concept for Link and the fact that it introduced the whole Light Force concept to Zelda, then why put the Minish Cap second? It could literally be anywhere in the timeline if you decide to forgo those things. But if you don't take them away, then there is no other place to put the game but first. So you cannot simply say like, well, I don't believe in the whole hat concept, so I'm gonna put the second. It doesn't make any sense to put the second if you decide to forget about the hat or the light force. So I guess I'll be going back to my main point. The main reason why I put the Minish Cap first is because otherwise it's in limbo. And because I'm trying to make a flawless timeline, it has to be somewhere. And if we don't have any explanation with the facts at our disposal to put a Minish Cap in any place, it has to come first. And even still, there is solid proof and facts of it being first anyways. So if you decide to take those facts away, then the game just simply doesn't fit in the timeline. Now I'm not saying that it has to come first because otherwise it can't be anywhere. I'm saying that we have proof that it can be first, but we don't have proof of anything else. And if it's not first, it could be anywhere or nowhere. So if it has no other place other than first, then well there you go. And one last thing, I want you to pay close attention to this sword. This is the Four Sword, as it appears on the Minish Cap, on Four Swords and on Four Swords Adventures. But now take a look at this sword. This was the intro scene for the pre-release version of the Minish Cap. So you can say that the intention of the developers when making the Minish Cap was to that of explaining some of the origins of the Master Sword. Now, this doesn't mean anything concrete, but I thought I should show you guys just because it was kind of interesting. But definitely, if you guys come up with some nice ideas on the Minish Cap of how it could actually be second or how it could be anywhere else but first or second, please leave it in the comments. It could be incredibly awesome if I would find a, a nice idea. But if you guys want to see more content from me, please subscribe and uh, as always, have a nice day.